Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies. We are so excited. I'm so excited to be before you on this evening for another awesome Sisters Empowering Sisters Empowerment Meeting. We want you to get excited for what's going on in this season. The shift is moving yet forward. Isaiah 43 and 19 states, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? You, do you perceive it, sister? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Why does that excite me? It excites me so much in this season because as last time we got together, we talked about the shift and we learned a little uh, vocabulary that a shift is a, a sudden move, moving from one place to another. Now the word tells us that it's bringing up that something God, God is doing something new. He's not into doing old things, but the new thing he is doing is springing up. And what excites me about that word, not just because it is spring and our time has moved forward, because so we have spring forward, but your life can also spring forward because we know that to spring is to move or to jump up suddenly, rapidly upward or forward so we want you to get excited because you have the opportunity for your life to not just move not to move slow but not to just move suddenly but to move suddenly in a rapid cut pace upward or forward and all all about we are all about moving upward we're all about moving forward and we're so excited about him making a way in the wilderness. There's a wilderness in your life that God is ready to make a way for and streams in the wasteland. What kind of streams? I don't know. I mean, it could be streams of income. You know, we always hear about that, about having multiple streams of income, right? So we're just so excited. So get ready to receive more information, more empowerment, more inspiration to prepare you for the next move of God in your life as things are springing forward this spring. All right, so before we move forward with the, with the word that's going to come forward, we want to prepare our hearts because we know that as our minds are ready, we have to get our hearts prepared for what's coming. So I am grace with the opportunity to come before you to read or to pray with you our mission I'm, I'm sorry our unity prayer all right now father we thank you as we gather at this appointed time and we praise your name that you have ordered our steps in one place together to draw strength from each other. Lord God, you are worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. For you have created all things and you have adopted us as your daughters. You have placed all of your divine skills in us and according to Psalms 139, 13, 14, we are fearfully, skillfully, and wonderfully made by you. Now we ask that you give us a complete understanding of what you want to do in our lives, in our homes, as grandmothers, mothers, wives, and sisters, at our jobs, business endeavors, in our ch churches, and whatever roles we play in life. Thank you, Lord, for this divine opportunity. We pray for sisters and women all over the world. Give us the wisdom and strength to become sisters, empowering sisters through Christ. Amen. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, share this platform with my awesome, wonderful beautiful, generous, cons oh, she has so many things, my sister, I, oh boy, Gerald, are you there? Good evening, Hi. Minister Perrin, how are oh, you? I'm so good, and oh my gosh, it looks like we met each other in the spirit without flowers, you so 
bring you today. Thank you, and so are you. And I'm excited about that springing forward with the new things that God is doing in our lives. Is that, and with your spring colors and our spring flowers, and Lord yes. is just springing up and doing a new thing. And, up, aren't they? And yes, they are. They're, everything is springing up. And I, I thank you for you always being ready and ready to serve. And we appreciate you and what you're doing in uh, this time. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Gerald, one of the administrators here in Fort Lauderdale for Sisters Empowering Sisters, and I'm here to give you our mission statement. Sisters Empowering Sisters, we're on a new move for God, our mission statement. Sisters Empowering Sisters Incorporated is an organization created to move women to another level spiritually, financially, emotionally, in their health and with their families. Our mission is to design a program and a support system for women to tap into their purpose and to help empower and motivate God's vision. The spirit of the Lord has ordained it for all sisters to jumpstart their purpose so that women can flow in, into complete peace, prosperity, and, and enter into God's destination for their lives. So everyone, women everywhere, God wants you to jumpstart your purpose. I'm excited. I would like to introduce each and every to each and every one of you a uh, phenomenal young lady who is always ready again, ready to serve. Who is always I call her a superstar behind the scenes, working it out. And every time you turn around to ask something that's just a, maybe a little bit that I may not understand, she's already on it and she already has it completed. So I'm excited to bring forth one of um, one of the phenomenal ladies, leaders in our organization this evening. Makisha Cook is with us this evening and she is, hey superstar, coming on in here. <laughs> how are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? You look fabulous as usual. I am very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you know we have to give it back to our our personal Michelle Obama, that's what we call you, our lady of grace. I got to give okay. that love back to you. So thank you for always being here to serve not only us and what we do in our community, but to serve your family, your children. Oh, I just love it, sis. So thank you. We appreciate you and we love you dearly, Miss Beautiful. <laughs> thank you, gorgeous. Have a great evening. We'll catch you on the other yeah. side. Yes, yes, yes. So I am, I'm just so excited tonight. Um, I'm just trying to contain myself. Uh, when, when God is moving and doing miracles, you know, right before you, it's, it's just hard to, to contain that, that thing that, that God is doing. Um, like my sister started, Corinne, she said that he's doing a new thing. God is definitely doing a new thing in this season. And we are so excited to see all the miracles, to see all, all the, the blessings, to see so many things come to uh, fruition, uh, the promises. Um, so I, I just have to first just give hats off to the beautiful, beautiful women behind the scene, our very own Dr. McNair, our very own Dr. Kara Watson. We just love them so much um, and, and just God giving them the vision to put us uh, in front of this platform to allow us to use the vision that God had given them, given the, the, the head, the founder, Dr. McNair, uh, our Lady A, our very own queen, um, this platform that we um, have been blessed to, to utilize, to share uh, all the good things that God is doing with, with the world. So we just thank you and we honor you for your sacrifice. We honor you and we just know that God is doing something great, not only in your life, Dr. McNair, but we know that he is blessing and doing some greater, greater things uh, within this organization and Dr. Watson's life as well. So we are just excited. I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, my sister on the platform uh, before we go deep into just giving this gratitude back to our women because God delivered a miracle today. He, he delivered a miracle today. He, he, he shut down, you know, all, all, of the, all of the naysayers. He shut down all of the thoughts. You know, thoughts can, can enter our mind, but God has a way of silencing so when we just believe, we, we just believe and we walk into that thing called belief. He just has a way of reassuring not only us, but those around us just through our belief. So I'm so excited and I'm just full with, with the movement of God and what he's doing um, in our lives. I'm just so full today. So, so with that being said, I want to bring this phenomenal 
woman to the stage. Oh my God, I just love her dearly. dearly. We call her our elder, uh, just a big sister to me in so many ways. And I just love her smile. You know, she dressed to impress you all. You know, we always checking each other out, not in a bad way, but in like, oh, okay, all right. I got you on the next one. And it's, it, it's just so fun to see, uh, you know, us women just love on each other and it be really uh, rooted in a great place from the heart. You know, the, the heart is good. So I just love her. She's so faithful. She walk it out. She don't just walk it out. She taught that thing. She She's the word uh, woman to hit you in the head with a Bible verse real quick. And I'm like, dang, some people just blessed that way. And I have the pleasure to bring it, bring into the platform, my amazing uh, I like to call her my big sister, Elder, Elder Wanda. Be beautiful. Are you there? <laughs> hey, look at that smile. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Bless you, bless you, my sister. <laughs> oh, I am so honored on tonight to just sit in this seat and sit on this platform on tonight to represent our awesome leaders and I too honor them on tonight as you have already done so because the great works that they have done we are the fruit of their labor on tonight ladies so we just thank each and every one of you all joining us on tonight and I tell you I give all that love right back to my sister I tell you even though I, she looks at me as a big sister. I look at her as my little big sister because there are areas, you know, everybody has their own joint. And there are areas I tell you, when I tell you this girl is the bomb doc. Come, I tell you, she helps us out in so many areas and she does it with a level of grace and she does it with a willingness to want to help people. And that's, and that's what this organization was built on women helping women everywhere not just one particular set of my set but it's all about us making sure that we reach women everywhere so our organization is about making sure that we build women and i tell you on tonight like my sister has already said it oh when god is yes. in the building when God is moving and you see the miracles and signs and wonders right before your face. Like she said, if you only can believe, it is possible. The word tells us all things are possible with him. And without him, nothing, man can't, with men, nothing is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So we thank God for the many blessings that he has performed on this day. Yes. For a time as this, for a he's a right now God. Yes, not just the God of yesterday, not the God of just tomorrow, but he is a right now God. And I love that verse that said, Whose report shall we believe? We don't believe the report of the Lord. So I thank God on tonight. Thank you, my sister. For that, for you know, honoring me like that, I honor you the same way. I honor the same God in you as you honor that God in me. And I'm just so excited about tonight. Are you excited about tonight? <laughs> I am, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm just like on a different level tonight. Like I say, when, when you receive a miracle, you see the miracle form right before your eyes. You just know God is doing something new. Not only new, but he's just doing something great. So yeah. you know, that, just, that just brings us into... Uh, when we come out of fear and faith and, you know, it can help us produce so many things when we're just yes. out of fear. Um, and we know a, a lot of those things that are attached to, to our hearts, um, including, mm -hmm. you know, finances. We know that finances weigh heavily, you know, on our shoulders, especially our community. We have a lot of single mothers, head of households. Mm -hmm. uh, finances, you know, seem to just weigh us down um, because we just head over water, just trying to make a way, you know? So I, I just, think that when we're able to step out of fear in so many different areas of our life, we give God the opportunity to really show us and manifest in our lives who he really is. Yes. So I'm, yeah. I'm, excited. I'm excited about, um, you know, the movement, the expectation. Yes. Yes. And, I, and I'm telling you, like you say, the title on tonight, when you come out of fear, faith can produce anything. Yes. Faith, the word tells us, now faith you got to have that faith at that very moment that's why the word says now because you need that faith 
right then. You don't need it a second later or a second before. You need it right then to produce the thing that you need to see manifested in the flesh. So I, I, I tied on tonight when you come out of fear, faith can produce finances that will produce wealth. Yes. When we understand that, yes, it takes finances. Why should we be um, afraid of talking about finances? How are we going to be able to do the things that God has called yes. us to do? I understand that the finances are not just for me. I have gotten a revelation of faith producing the finances Mm -hmm. for not just me, but for we, women everywhere, their seed, their households, their families, and them that are connected to them. And not only just for that, but so that we can build the kingdom works so that we can help people that we can be the distribution centers that mm-hmm. God has called us to be and not just in one area of mm-hmm. our lives. Cause I think that when people could be, when we began to talk about finances, people really just think we're just talking about money. No, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about wealth. Yes. Finances connected to our wealth, to yes. our health, to yes. our mental state of mind, to our emotional state of mind yes. and to our physical state. So we really have to make sure that when we're talking about faith and finances, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's, mm-hmm. it's in the word. Because if, when you look back in the Bible, um, Solomon was rich. Mm-hmm. David had money. Hey, Jesus even had a money. He had a treasure. Come on. Yes. yes. So, so I don't understand why, you know, sometimes I think religious and religiosity has gotten some of us to believe and have conditioned us in our mind that because we say we serve God, we should not have the things that are in this. We should not be connected to the worldly things. Yes. But it's not that we are we, we are not overcome by these worldly things. We are not submerged, submersing ourselves in the worldly things, but we we are here. Mm-hmm. And we are a part of these things. And these things are for us to use to help others and not just for ourselves. Yes. Amen. I, yes. And, and just to piggyback on uh, what you said, so many of us, we, we ask and we pray for so many different things, but we're not willing to step out. Like mm-hmm. we're not willing to come out of our comfort zone. And that's when we truly show God that we trust you. We trust you because we're stepping out of our comfort zone. And just like we ask for different things in our finances, and I just want to show you this, a lot of us are doing this with with our finances or with things, whatever. We're holding it like this, right? We're holding Mm -hmm. it like this, but we're asking God to release some other things to us. Even if Mm -hmm. he released something to me, I can't catch it Mm -hmm. because my hands are not available. I'm not willing to let go of what I have to receive what I'm asking him for. Mm -hmm. So how can he trust how can he trust us to give us more in any area, you know, including finances? How can he really trust us when we're not really to, to let go, to let go, to receive greater? And in doing that, it, it involves trust. We have to be able to trust him because that's when our faith is really tested. Yes. You know? and, and, and this is, you know, what the word of God says in Matthew 17, 20, he said to them, because of you of little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, Y'all, that's all he said, the faith of a mustard seed. Then he said, you will say to this mountain, move from here and there, and it will move. So I want you to think about what God commands and demands from us. He left us the word to follow it. That's with everything. So a a, a beautiful woman, (laughs) I was sitting at the feet of of so many of us know her, but I was sitting at the feet of um, Mama Jody a a few days ago, and she was dropping all that wisdom on me, and I was just sitting there like a baby, just, oh. I could just sit there. I could just sit there and just, oh my God, and just collect it all day because it is nourishment for the soul. And so many of us don't have the the opportunity or the connection or the, you know, the uh, or the upbringing to receive that good old soul food. And that's like the real nurturing, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But she was just dropping some some nuggets on me um, and and just talking about the word and what the word says, and it, it's just rich. She says, everything that you need, every problem you have is in the word, right? Anything mm-hmm. you need, an mm-hmm. answer to the word. 
right? Even coming out of fear is in the word. So I come into so many in contact with people who are, who have been attacked by anxiety, mm -hmm. anxiety, anxiety with finances. I'm mm -hmm. coming in contact with women who are freaking out and have anxiety over, over finances because they're holding it like this and they're saying, oh my God, if I just let it go, do I know if he, I don't know if he's going to replace yeah. it. I don't know if he's going to give me more, but they're holding on to the little that they have, like it's life or death. So where's the trust? That's what I say. Where's the faith? Like, how do we build our faith to come out of anxiety over finances, anxiety over, over, over children, you know, when children are out or, you know, our young kids are out or yeah. teenage, you know, young adults, they're out. We get attacked with so much anxiety. We hear something mm -hmm. from the doctor. We get, we get attacked with anxiety. So these are the things that we have to, you know, be able to rely on, you know, Elder Wanda to, to just know, let God know that I yeah. trust you with everything. That's it. You know? That's so I, it. Yeah. So I, I just, um, but go ahead. I, I'll let you. Yes, that's it. Because what you were saying, you were talking about faith and how we get trapped and get stuck into being fearful and it keeps us from really having faith. And we, if, and when we understand that if we have fear, there's no way that we're going to be able to have faith because faith is not going to allow, fear is not going to allow you to believe the promises of anybody. Yes. It doesn't matter if it's mama, daddy, God, whoever it may be. Fear will not allow you to believe one thing they say. Yes. So when the first, I truly believe the first thing we have to do to get beyond fear, we got to have faith. Yes. That's the only way you're going to get beyond fear. Because the word tells us that faith, that not faith, but love can cast out all fear. Perfect love can cast out fear. So once you get faith, you're going to know how to love. You're going to mm -hmm. receive love because you're going to be able then to say that, oh, okay, I have faith to know that this person is going to love me or I have faith to know that God loves me because it's going to take faith in order to believe because that's what faith is, believing. So it's going to take faith for you to believe that the love of God is real. Mm -hmm. And once you got faith coupled with love, then you are able to trust every process that he's putting you through whatever it need whatever the process look like all you're gonna do okay lord i got faith mm. i got to keep trusting whatever the doctor is telling you the doctor said i the, the, well this is what the doctor came in and told me and told me this oh but oh no i got faith uh, that ain't that i don't i don't care what you're saying right now doctor but um i got faith well, the, the mortgage people might be saying, oh, we're going to take your house next month. Oh, well, that might be what you're saying, but I got faith that God is going to bring me through. I got faith that mm -hmm. I'm going to believe the promises. And he said, David said in his word, I, I was young, but now I'm old and I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is seed bad oh. bread. So oh. my seed ain't going to even beg no bread. If I ain't going to be forsaken, he said the righteous won't be forsaken, meaning that, oh, he's not going to forsake me. He's not going to not only not forsake me, but he ain't going to forsake my seed because they're not going to even have to beg or borrow from others. So I just thank God for the word because the word is real. And I was looking up today, it was just so interesting when I thought about faith and fear. I looked up, I said, how many times is fear is in the Bible? And, and they gave different numbers because, you know, they dipped so many different versions of the yeah. Bible. But the, the biggest number I saw, it was like 500. And there was one um, number that I saw in there and it said 365. I said, oh, that's interesting. The uh, phrase do not fear is in the Bible 365 times. I said, that's interesting. I said, so there are 365 do not fear for each day to let you know there's no need for you to fear anything. What are you fearing? Then you just say, Mama Joe told you everything you need is in the word. Come on. So, 365 days, you can find a scripture in there that tells you, do not fear. Now, but check this out. This was the very interesting part. When you look to see how many times faith is in the Bible, 
Come on. It's not in there that many times. Mm. And I say, I begin to ponder. I'm like, okay, Father, so why isn't faith overriding fear? He said, because of the scripture you said earlier, if mm. you just have a mustard seed, my God. That's all you need. You don't need much. Need mustard seed. <laughs> That month of C is going to overtake all 365 on. days of the year. Just one little, you all know how small a mustard seed one is. Little, wipe it out. All you need is mustard seed faith mm. to overcome fear every day of your life. So when you have that, and I say, wow, I say that's power, powerful mm -hmm. because that seed, once, if you ever seen a mustard seed tree, it grows to be this humongous tree. And so I understand why he said a mustard seed, because it grows and it grows mm -hmm. and it grows. The more you trust, the more you learn of him, the more you study of him, the more you, you um, impart, allow his spirit to impart in you. Your faith is going to grow day by day. So that was just so powerful. <laughs> Listen, that was good because, I mean, the word is true, as we all know. But yes. uh, I, I just, I experienced that recently. Uh, when mm -hmm. I was praying, you know, when I did something that was just out of the norm, right? So we know that the world or, you know, society or whatever, our upbringing tells us this is what we yes. must do. Yes. But God says, I can do all things. Mm. But the system says, this is what you must do. Mm -hmm. You must retire after 24, 25 years. But God come back and say, but I can do all things. <laughs> but, you know, people look at you. I, it, it's crazy, but this is, this is how faith is. And this is how, this is how you grow your faith through experience, right? Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if God didn't come and knock us, if he, we, we experience things, we, we experience uh, illnesses, we experience death, we experience all these different things in life. These things come and they knock us off the path, right? Mm -hmm. God, God wants to see if we're willing to get back up. He wants to see, are you, you know, de depending on whatever, your check? Are you depending on your spouse? Are you depending on whomever or whatever more than me? So I, I experienced that. I, I, I just had this paradigm uh, mm -hmm. shift that happened when I just took, when I just made a move, right? And everybody was looking at me. It was, it was crazy because everybody was looking at me like, like they were robots. And then they was looking at me like, like I was God, like I was Jesus walking on water. It was a crazy experience, but they was looking at me like, oh my God, are you sure? Are you? And I'm like, yeah. They like, well, you're leaving. They was looking like I really shook up mm. the people I work with just by making one move. And they were, they kept talking about retirement and I got a paradigm shift and I kept saying, God is my retirement. And you talked about the seed. We, we talked about this, this, this mustard, you know, the mustard seed, how small it is. But we know that there's a forest in a mustard seed, right? If we pick it up, we probably can't see it in our hand. But there's mm -hmm. a forest that lies in our hand if mm. we just have faith to move and put that seed where it needs to go. Mm. Plant that seed in the ground, a forest manifests when mm. that seed is in the right environment. So if, if, I'm a, if I'm that mustard seed and people are looking at me like, what are you doing? No, I, I'm looking at them like, do you not understand that there's a seed in me, that there's a forest in me? Like, mm. I'm planted and a forest got to come out of me. I can't stay here because as trees grow here, guess what? It's a roof. Trees can't grow. They get restricted if you think about it. If we try to grow something in the building, in the classroom, put it in a cup, a seed, right? Mm -hmm. It can only grow mm -hmm. so far. It has mm -hmm. to be free for the forest to manifest from the seed. Ooh. And that's and that's what I started. That's what God, the revelation God started to show me. He started to show me the mindset of the people and how the mm -hmm. chains have been locked on the minds for so long and gone from generation to generation to generation. Because I continue to say, but God says, I can do all things, y'all. That means when I make this move, he can do all things. That means I can make 12 times what I'm making because he can do all things. Like, he, he's not a God that can be limited. And mm. when you get a revelation of this, I say he can do all things. And I keep telling everybody, let's see what God does. That's what I keep, I keep putting it on God because God yes. says, give me whatever your dream is. So therefore, when you accomplish the dream, people will know it had to take me to do it. 
there'll be no doubt. So I'm just so excited when we talk about being able to come out of out, out of fear to yes. walk in faith because that's where our true freedom lies in God. When we're yes. just not walking in fear, and you know how people can get on this plane and jump off the jump off with a parachute. Mm -hmm. they have absolutely no fear. They know with 110% certainty that when I jump off this plane, this parachute is opening. They ain't thinking twice about it. And that's how, that's the revelation that I began to get personally going through this, this process. When I say, I, when you feel the fear, that's what I like to tell people now. When you mm -hmm. feel the fear, do it anyways. And say to yourself, let's see what God does. Let's see what he do with this move, because this That's is who it. I walk with. This is who is guiding me. This is who is leading me. So I just, I, I just want to, you know, to, to just share that. And I also like to say, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of, not of evil to give you an expected end. And I like to ask the women, what is your expectation of your life? God had an expectation he has an expectation for our lives, a good expectation, a good end. So I like to ask the, the, the ladies, what is your expectation of your life? My expectation, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God put a seed in me that must have the freedom to grow. I know this. And people say, how do you know? I believe. That's what mm -hmm. I believe. And we talk about that. When you just yeah. have the belief of a mustard seed, God can do wonders with your life. We ask him for millions to bless his kingdom. He got to know you're willing to, to stand up and walk out of your comfort zone. He got to know I'm not holding this tight because I got trust in you to know that you're going you gonna to give me 12 times of this what I'm holding. So that's mm -hmm. why I ain't got to hold on to it tight because of my belief. I yeah. just, right, sister? So I, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just so excited <laughs> for the new, the new thing that he's, he's doing. Yes. Uh, because yeah. when, when we get out of our way and we, we jump off that plane, listen to me, 110% God is going to catch you. If yes. That's connected to, oh, he's going to catch you. And when he catch you, the world going to see that your trust was always in him. Yeah. So I just, I just listen. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> I know. When you just know. Yes. When have that expectation of what God is doing in your life and your assignment that he has given you, you have an expectation. You have an assignment. It, it's on you to manifest it. Yes. So I just thank God for him placing me in an environment where the seed not only can germinate, but where it can manifest. Where yeah, it comes, yes. where the trees can grow without restriction, you know, where the freedom can come and God can really, you know, get the glory out of, out of hmm. this thing put in me. So I'm just and, and, yes, uh, and, and that's the and that's the big picture of it all. I think when we really think about it, it's all about him getting the glory. And, and what I heard you saying is, I heard this scripture come up: Romans twelve and two. Do not conform to the pattern yes. of this world, yes. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh. Then, only then. Will you be able to test yes. and approve what God's will is? His good, pleasing, and perfect will. In order for you to have walked off your job at the age of 41, oh. child, <laughs> you have a renewing of your yes. mind. Yes. You would have not been able to do that without your mind being renewed. Because once your mind got renewed, like you just said, I knew that I knew that I knew that mm -hmm. God is going to back me up. And that's what the word tells us. Then you will be able to test and not just test it, but you're going to be to approve it. Yes. What God's will is is because once God gets through doing with what he's going to do in your life, mm. it's going to be proof yes. of his glory upon your life. And I think that once we get to the point where we have totally renewed our minds, fear has to go 
Now we ain't gonna sit here and tell you that it ain't gonna come. Come on. It ain't gonna come. And like my sister said, when it shows up, guess what? Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You got to do it anyway. Because fear is just there to keep you from doing the will of God. The fear is there to keep you from doing his good, pleasing, and perfect will. She could have she could have ignored every sign that God had given her by not leaving, by not um saying, I'm retiring. But she don't even know. We don't even know how many other people that she has freed just from doing the will of God. And when it all boils down, ladies and gent- ladies, that's what it is about. Hmm. Those people that are connected to us. She didn't do this for herself. Trust me, this is a selfless walk. It's not a, at the end of the day, we get it and we understand that, hey, when I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for them that are watching me, that might need that ready, that God had been told them to walk out of, off of their jobs and God had been told them to retire, but fear held them back. So I commend my sister on what, what just doing, just being willing and willing to obey. Cause that's what the word tells us. If you're willing and you obey, you'll eat the good of the land. Mm-hmm. So like she said, she's not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. She ain't worried about what she's going to wear. She ain't worried about what she's going to eat. She ain't worried about none of that. Because God said, I already provided, provided for you. So why you, why are we sitting around, like she said, holding your hand like this? When you, like she, what she was trying to say, if you got your hand like this, you can't let nothing go and you can't receive nothing. So nothing coming in and nothing going out because you're so tight fisted. And so God can't even get to you to get through you what he wants to get to someone else. And that's what we have to realize when we are moving out of fear into faith. It's going to produce the things of God, Mm. whether it be finance whether it be physical health, whether it be mental health, emotional health, whatever it is, when you move from fear, it's going to produce into faith. It has to produce the will of God in your life because what you're saying is what my sister was saying. You trust him. Yes. You trust what he already has promised you. So I, 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 I mean, I'm just so excited about what God is doing in your life right now. And hey, 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 Woo-wee. I tell you, when you are attached to certain people, when you are attached to a certain community, I'm telling you, people, women everywhere, that community will put a fire under you. And the word tells us iron sharpens iron. So her, trust me, her iron is going to sharpen a whole lot of other women. And then we're going to be able to, or we will continue to walk by faith and not by what we see. And that's what I hear you saying when you say, hey, I did. I, I, it was time I had to go. She's like, I'm walking this thing out by faith. I can't be looking back over my shoulder towards her. Ooh, ooh, what we going to do now? No. <laughs> it's too late. I'm walking by faith. Wow, sis. I mean, God is just doing awesome things. And I tell women everywhere, if you all are con- connected to a community where you see God is truly moving, he might not be moving how you think he should be moving. That's why he tells you in his word, renew your mind so that you understand how he's moving and you will be able to move with him. When you get with what God is doing, trust me, he going to bless what you're doing because everything he's doing is blessed. Listen. So we just got to make sure that we're with God and what he's doing. Listen, Especially I, I, in this season. Yeah, and, I, and I like to think about um, the story in the Bible when he talks mm-hmm. about the, the gifts, right? When, yes. when they had the, yes. um, the gifts, right? They had a certain amount. Mm-hmm. Um, um was it talent yeah the talent yes the talents the talents um they had a certain amount of talents but this is the thing it does not matter if they had one 
if they had two or if they had five, there was an expectation. Yes. One, mm. the, there was an expectation on the one. So for many that says, well, I don't have that or I'm not like this person. Or, I'm not like that person. Mm. We have to come to a place where we believe that what God has put in us is something that no one else has. And I like to say it's like that fingerprint. You're mm-hmm. the only one that has that gift in the entire world. Well, mm-hmm. for many, there's an expectation that God has for you to produce from whatever it is that's in you. So I think that when we when we get to a place, um, and, and like you said, just one move can can start a fire just one lighter you know we light a match it can it can light the the, the fire of so many others just by one action um and i i like to come back and just show you know the people that when that just one move that one action was made to see the people to see the disbelief in their face it's like how could you possibly do this and that's when you know how how much people depend on the world system and how they don't They don't recognize, even believers don't recognize the power that God holds when he said, I am the system, right? I I am the system. So I I can do do all things if you just believe. So I think that our belief is is something that we have to work on strengthening because we say it, we often say it, but we don't walk in it. We don't live in it. And these are some of the things that hinder our movement or either our growth um, yes. in God, when we just fail to move in our belief, whatever it, it may be, we fail to make those necessary steps to say, I know what God has put in me. And I'm not comparing what he's put in me to anyone else. I just know what he's put in me. I have to produce because we often hear Les Brown say, it's a shame. You know, we go to the graveyard. It's the richest place in the world. He loves to say that. And we think about that. It's the richest place in the world. And I, I, you know, I just want the ladies to think about what is that thing that's beating in your heart? I'll, I like to call it the heartbeat. You know, it's that beat that does not die. It's that beat that's yeah. coming to me. And I, I love to share this story um, about Terry Egioma. And I'm sharing her story because she's all over the place right now. She's just blowing up. But thing, no one saw her in her suffering stage. Mm. She was a school teacher. She was a school teacher. She caught a lot of flack from employee or, or her boss. And, and she just giving her testimony. She's just talking about all the turmoil she went through, the, 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 the money that she made as a school teacher. She just talked about all of the different things that she struggled with. It was a struggle um, with her. And she's a believer. And she, she continued to say um, during her testimony that she just knew, <laughs> she just knew that there was more to her life. Mm. She helped so many people, but she knew being a school teacher, it could not provide, you know, the things that she wanted to do in the natural and, and help the people in the kingdom of God. She just couldn't do it. So she started teaching herself and I can just relate to her story, but she started just teaching herself how to do options trading, which is trading stocks. She said, you know, I often heard about it. And back in the days I, I asked my mom, um, or my, my mom about it, but no one knew about it. Like I had no access to the information. Mm-hmm. And when she said that I thought about us. Do we have access to the information? And this is the difference. Now we have access to all of the information. So think about the expectation that God has on your seed when we have access to everything. And her testimony, she went on to share, you know, she went on to share that it was a struggle with her getting it. She called her mom crying and her mom picked up the phone and she said, I lost all my money. And, and I just felt like laughing because I can relate. I've been there where I've lost thousands, you all. But the promise that God has given me keeps me moving forward. But she said, she called her mom crying. She had quit her. She left her job. She, she went traveling the world and she said, you know what? I want to trade and travel. So she went over in, 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 in Asia somewhere. She's trading on a computer, trading and traveling. And her mom, she had her mom's blessing. She left teaching. You know, she retired from the system and she kept going. And she called her mom. She said, mom, I lost everything. And her mom said, well, you can't come home until you get everything back. So, <laughs> so you might as well stay there and keep trading until you get all your money back. And she said that that just shook her. And she was like, that. her mom put an expectation. Mm. 
and said, no, you got to do this now because you lost everything. And she continued pouring you all oh, this year alone. She sold over $40 million in her product that she's created. She created an ebook that teach a program that teaches others how to trade in the stock market. And this year alone, this year alone, she sold over $40 million worth of her program to teach others how to trade in the stock market. Wow. Terry Egioma, black female, retired school teacher. And her testimony is just phenomenal, but she says there was an expectation. When I hear her testimony, she say, no, I just knew. She said, I just knew that wasn't going to be my end because there was so much more that I was commanded to do. And, and, and that's the difference when we know and we make these moves and we jump out this plane and we depending on God. Let me tell you, God is waiting to catch us in front of everybody because he knows that when he catch us and the parachute open up and he, he's our parachute and he catch us. He knows that we're going to rise in front of everybody. Yes, guess who's going to get the glory? God's going to get the glory. And that's who's getting her glory. She gives him the glory for everything. God gets the glory. When she was falling, God pulled up. He gets the glory. But she had to be willing to do something different and put a command on God to say, I'm doing this. You got to catch me. You got to be my parachute. So that was just, just a testimony, a powerful testimony um, that I wanted to say, but she's, she's blessing the world. She's absolutely blessing the world with her gift. Um, and, and she's just doing wonderful things. So I wanted to just share that, bring that to the platform to let people know that nothing is impossible, you all, when we believe. It's our belief, you know? Yes. You know, so it, yes. it's powerful, powerful story, sis. I'm yes, telling you. Yes, yes. And, and, and uh, while you was talking, this scripture came up because you were saying that God, when God, these gifts, we already have these gifts and he, it, he has the expectation for us to use these gifts mm -hmm. to make sure that we are doing his will and his will is that make sure that we are helping our brothers and our yes. sisters, like you say, become a better version of themselves. So these, the expectation that he has we have to pray and ask for that same expectation that he has. Because in his word, Deuteronomy 8, Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it, uh, in the NIV version, it says, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Yes. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. So he has given us everything we need to get wealth, but it was for us to confirm his covenant. Because when he said he given us the ability to get the, to get wealth, yeah. it's to confirm the covenant that he's cut with us, that we're gonna do his will with the wealth that we have. The wealth that we're gonna use the wealth to lift up other women and their families everywhere, that we're gonna use our wealth to build the schools that need to be skilled, built to teach our children, that we're gonna use our wealth to teach our children about financial wealth, about, about um, health uh, wealth and physical wealth and all the wealth that we need that pertains to life. Yes. And I think once we understand that, we won't be so afraid of, of being a millionaire. Cause I, I remember, I, I, you know, I'm transparent. I, I, I don't need to be no, I don't want to be, Lord, I don't want to be no millionaire. I'm fine. But, but he, he would yes. tell me, he said, but it ain't for you. Yes. That's it's not good. for you. It's for what I need you to do. I'm going to get the millions to you because I know you're going to be willing and you're going to obey what I tell you to do with them. I can trust you with the millions. So yes. a lot of times that might be why a lot of us don't want to be millionaires or billionaires yes. because we don't even trust ourselves 
as being a hundred near. Is there oh, such a thing? Out. I mean, right. you know, a thousand near. I mean, <laughs> we're we struggling with that because we want to buy shoes and purses and, you know, yes. all the nice stuff we want to ride. Nice. And, and that is, and nothing is wrong with that. But there is a system to yes. everything we need to do. And we're not talking about the world system because the word already told us, don't conform to this because the, what the world system told us is you do it big every time. You, when you get yours, you get yours. Yes. Don't help nobody else. Yes. But kingdom tells us to help our brother. Kingdom tells us two are better than one because greater is their reward. So we, when you're working with kingdom, guess what? You ain't got to do it by yourself because oh. you have a community yes. that is working with you. When you are working with kingdom, the finance is going to come to produce the wealth that needs to be produced through you. But we got to be willing to obey ladies we got to make sure that we're hearing directly from god so that we can connect to the right people yes that we can connect to the people that do you all not know that there are people out there with the resources they looking for people to give to yes. millionaires access money billionaires right. want to sow into you but you are out yes. of position so women, ladies, well, we got to get in position. Thank you, Sister Keisha, for telling us to get in position so that we can hear from God and do his will and do it without fear so that we'll be able to produce the finances, to produce the wealth that we need in our community so that we can do the will of God. That's what it's all about. It's mm -hmm. all about doing the will of God. God is so good, sis. This, this, uh -huh. this is how good he is. He will give you access to someone else's million. Okay. <laughs> that's, like, that's the kind of God we serve. He yeah. you just access. You got access to what you need. Don't what stop. Mean, you got access. Okay, so we're going to wrap this thing up. <laughs> Whatever you need is in the house. Yes. Even, I don't even have the millions physically, but he he'll give me access to them. As Ooh. if you got access just because you believe. So I just I, I I just love it. I just love what God is doing um in this hour. And I just listen, we're in great expectation. He is doing a new thing and we're walking in it. We're, we're walking in it because he's given us the power to do so um with, with us just believing. So yeah. I would just like to leave, you know, with the platform tonight and the women who are who are connected to us tonight. I, I would just like to leave, you know, just a few words of encouragement. Just go for it. Go yeah. for it. Challenge God. These are some of the things that I would like to, whatever it is, go for it. Challenge God. If you got to start whatever that is in your heart, that that beat, you got to start it in your living room at the kitchen table. Go for it. Challenge, challenge God. Challenge him so much. So when he, he, catch you when you jump out that plane everybody is going to be looking at you and they're going to say that they got to be god they got to mm. be god. so i like to tell you start with what you have so often we think we need all of this to start with me myself no i need this i can't start that into that i can't start it to that because i don't have this 100 me procrastination kills it kills the seed it stops the seed from germinating so i say start with what you have god can take the little and make it many, make it plenty. He can give you access to the many, even if you have little. So start with what you have and start where you are. You, yes. don't, need a, you don't need a business. You don't need a building. Hey, sit at, sit at, by your bed. If you got a little chair there <laughs> in a computer, start right there in that bed by that chair. And I often think about the Apple guy, the guy who started Apple. Um, I can't think of his name, but he um, created the Apple phones and he was in his basement, y'all. He, this man just, um, just, just moved on what he believed. He just believed you all. And he was in his basement, barefooted, shorts, <laughs> shirt probably in bays in two, three months. He was just moving <laughs> on his vision and on belief. But when you are so focused, even this man not being a believer, I don't know if he was a believer, but I'm just saying, even if he wasn't you all, 
it just goes to show you the power of belief mm -hmm. and how you can move mountains even when you're not a believer god is no respect of person you all it's your belief that moves the mountain so again start with where you are and i love to say feel the fear and do it anyways it's going to be fearful but when you feel the fear you all you know for listen when you start to feel that fear you know that you're out your comfort zone when you're out, out of your comfort zone you all god can move in ways that you have never seen him move before fear produces courage when we provide the courage you all and show god oh it's me and you right now let's go for it he's going to show you what your courage produces your courage is going to produce the fear that you, I mean, the, the faith that you need to manifest any dream that you have in your heart to manifest. It produces that. So I wanted to leave, leave that word with you all that, you know, no, no matter what, what, whatever that thing is that God has given you, whatever fingerprint he has given you, it can be manifested. It can leave it with the world. Les Brown like to say, whatever you have, leave it with the world. It, it wasn't made to go back with you. Mm. So what you have in you, you must leave it here with the world. That's your duty, right? That's your gift to the world. So I leave you all with whatever you have, leave it here. Don't be selfish and take it back with you. Wow, wow, that's awesome. I want to back up what you just said about access, about God giving us access to what we have not even labored for in the yes. word. John 4 and 38. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Mm -hmm. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Don't labor. tell me God won't do it. He has set us up if we are willing and obey. We will reap what we even worked for if we oh. are in position. It's in his word. I didn't make this up. John 4, 38. Read it for yourself so that oh. that can ignite the fire on the inside of you and that you can move on the word of God. That's what faith is all about. Moving on the promises of God. But we have to make sure we're willing and we obey. We have to make sure that we're positioned in, in alignment with his command with his commands that he has given us. God always give us instructions. Mm. He don't leave us without knowing what to do and how to do it. He gives us instructions. And I'll leave you with these three, with four keys that I have. Mm. One, um, a key that will help you to come out of fear and into faith that can produce finances. You have to renew your mind. I already talked about that. Sis, she had to renew her mind in order to take that leap of faith. In mm -hmm. order to get that faith, you got to renew your mind through the word of God. Two, when you're coming out of fear into faith to produce faith finances, you have to love and have faith. First mm -hmm. John 4, 18 states that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And because faith has torment, he in I mean he that feared is not made perfect in love. So when you have fear, there's no way that you're going to be able to love right. Mm -hmm. When you have fear, there's no way you're going to be able to trust right. Number three, when you come out of fear into faith to produce finances, you must be willing and obey. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised. Oh, oh, to your ancestors. When we understand that there's a promised inheritance that has been set up for us, that if we are willing and obey, we shall receive it. It activates faith that activates love that produces the now face substance that we hope for. And for that's good. Um, when you come out of fear and you want to produce finances that are going to produce wealth, Hebrews 10 and 36 states, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, hmm. you might receive the promise. Patience will stabilize your faith 
and love for God, causing you to remain steadfast, persistent, and unmovable, always abounding in the will of God. Yeah. And I knew that with you ladies on tonight, we just have to make sure that we're plugged into the right community. And that's the community of believers because they will encourage you. They will continue to stand in the gap for you. They will make sure that you are able, like my sister said, to access. Yes. You will be able to have access to the resources that God has for you. And you didn't even work for him. Because when I tell you my sister had some knowledge, I ain't, I, I, I'm i telling y'all I didn't work for that knowledge that she'd be dropping on me. I'm just saying, she worked for that knowledge, but I got, I have access to that Come knowledge. Come on. And in the word said it, he put, he, he put us in that place so that we can have access. So I thank God on tonight for this opportunity to share with each and every woman out there on tonight. And I thank God that he allowed me to share this panel with you on tonight, my sister. It was a pleasure. Listen, it always is. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. My, my, our word woman, thank you. And we just so honored to have you um, just a part of us. Love you. Love you. Love you. All right, ladies, at this time, it's the part that every woman out there can take part in on tonight. Yes, it is donation times. Women everywhere, know that your seed is going into a fertile ground. Your seed will give assistance to women everywhere, and it will also serve our community. For we all understand the power of sowing because 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, 9, 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. I have been led to ask each and every woman that is connected under the sound of my voice to sow a seed of $30 on tonight. And if you do not have that seat of $30 on tonight, ladies, please do not allow that to hinder you from sowing into this ground that shall produce a harvest. So as the Lord has put it upon your heart. And if you can't sow the, if you can't sow the 30 and you want to sow more than the 30, feel free to do so on tonight, ladies, knowing that as I said before, your seed will most, most likely, will most definitely um, supply the harvest on the other side. Trust me, whether it be in your life or in the life of someone else. Thank you, ladies. And you can go to our website, S-E-S-I-N-C-0-7-0. I'm sorry, ladies. S-E-S-I-N-C-0-7 dot org. That website again is sesinc07.org and push the donation button and you can donate on tonight. At this time, I would like to bring forth my beautiful sister, Corinne. Corinne, are you out there? She's going to come back and give us more information on the organization and more um, information on health tips on tonight. Come on back, Corinne. Are you there, my sister? I am here. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you all ladies shared on this evening. I was yeah. blessed by it. Bless so you. just to um, share a little bit about Sisters and Parents, this is what we are about other than what you see here as we come before you um, bi-weekly on these Fridays. Uh, Sisters and Parents Services is a 501c3 tax deductible organization. We are a organization for women, by women. Um, Sister Empowering Sisters um, throughout the year offers various community seminars. Um, some of those which we uh, are funneled through are youth mentorship and entrepreneurship programs being Girl Talk for Young Girls ages um, from seven to 18 and our program for boys, which is boys, business, and basketball. Some of those trainings and seminars that we offer is actually um, finances. We believe um, in training our youth 
regarding the things that we didn't necessarily learn about when we were young. Most of us didn't learn about money until we started actually making it on our own as adults and we didn't receive the financial education. So we strive to um, empower the youth through financial literacy. Um, we also have seminars on safety, human trafficking, which we know has become rampant in the last several years, health and wellness. And we also have scholarship programs or funding for uh, those youth that are that come through the program. Sisters and Power Sisters is not only um, a nonprofit 501c3 organization, but we also do have for-profit businesses to be able to help you. We believe, as we like to say, that everything we need is in the house. So if everything we need is in the house, we have to be able to reach each other in tangible ways. So Sisters and Power Sisters, we also have We Legacy Realty, we have, um, we offer credit restoration services. So that way, if you are at the point in your life that you're ready to buy a home, sell a home, or your numbers aren't quite right yet to be able to purchase that home, we are that one-stop shop for you. Uh, we also have uh, other platforms that we connect with women. Uh, one of them being our WOW Women Hotline, our WOW Women of War Hotline. Uh, which on that line, we empower women by testimonies because the word tells us we are overcome by the hearing of testimonies. Um, we receive we receive prayer requests that you might be able to connect with us in prayer to for us to agree with you in what you are praying for God concerning his will for your life. We assist sisters. Again, we believe in helping each other in tangible ways, not just praying for one another and seeking things that are spiritual. But if you're in the point of your life, it's hard for you to, to pay that light bill, to pay that water bill, or even to feed your children, we connect with you in tangible ways. And these are things that we offer for a low membership of $100 annually. And even, you know, besides that, I don't want to say it that way, even the women that we connect with on our wild line, we don't know if they're, if they're members or not. You know, so many churches... You know, and, and this is nothing against the house of the Lord, but some of them operate in that way that if you're you you're not tithing, if you're not doing that, you know, different financial things in the in the church, you can't get help. Well, if you need help, we don't care where you go to church, we don't care who you're paying, what you're paying, you don't even have to be a member. So I just wanted to fix that a little bit. Um, but our membership is one hundred dollars annually to be a part of this wonderful organization that is here to connect with you, yes, spiritually. Um, in your health, in your finances, and to um, address the needs of women everywhere. Sister Empowering Sisters is concerned about your health. We know we've been in the midst of a pandemic, so we always want to be mindful to remind you of these tips, remind you to wear your mask, to remind you to continue those breathing treatments, to drink tea, to ba basically do things to boost your immune system and to remember to even... Um, to remember to do things to boost your, your gut health because our immune system is in our gut. So before, before I go forward, I just want to just, just um, remind you of the word that we received on this evening. Received on this evening um, uh, regarding faith. We want to just remember that as Sister Wanda mentioned, that we have faith, that God gives us faith as a mustard seed. And so many times we, we receive that word as meaning that all we need to have is a little bit of faith. Well, as she reminded us, mustard seed faith grows. So our faith may be so small that you can't see it, but it's gonna grow. So we need to have faith that has the capability of growing into something big. So just want you to keep that on your mind as we go into prayer. So Father God, we thank you for the word on this evening. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the ability to have faith that is dynamic. Not That is not static, but is able to germinate and to grow into something that is bigger than our eyes can see. We thank you, Lord God, that you have a purpose and a plan for our lives. And that purpose and plan, Lord God, is to prosper us in our 
health, Lord God, and also in our finances, because your word tells us that you give us the ability to obtain wealth. We thank you, Lord God, that whether we work on a job or we don't work on a job, you are our, you are our source. These things, Lord God, that we pursue, they're merely resources, but you are the source of everything that we need. We thank you, Lord God, for the word, Lord God, that you that you provided us, reminding us, Lord God, that as we renew our minds, that keeping our minds stayed on you. And that as we love, we're able to move beyond the fear because your word tells us that perfect love casts out all fear. And then even, Lord God, if we are at the point that we're still feeling fear in our emotions, we don't have to let that fear stop us. We can feel the fear and do it anyway. We can be afraid, Lord God, and to do it anywhere, anyway. We thank you, Lord God, that our, that our faith has the power to manifest the dreams that, are, that we have in our lives. We pray, Lord God, that whatever those dreams that we have in our lives, that they connect with your will for our lives. Because we realize, oh God, that, that obedience is better than sacrifice. We want to be obedient with the things you have called us to do. So, Lord God, whatever the hopes, the plans, the dreams we have in our lives, may they always be in step and syncopated with the will that you have for our lives. We make the great exchange yet again on tonight, Lord God, exchanging our will for our lives for your will for our lives. And we know that, Lord God, that when our will partners with your will, when we leave here, we will leave empty because we've done everything you have called us to do. We thank you that we're not blessed, Lord God, just for ourselves, but that we are blessed to be a blessing, to be a blessing, Lord God, to not only those who we know and we love, but to, to be a blessing, Lord God, to those who will never be able to pay us back, to those who will never be able to even tell us thank you, because you have called us to be the hands and the feet of Christ. You have called us, Lord God, to bless the less fortunate. And how can we be a tangible blessing to them unless we have goods to share with them? So we thank you for this word. We thank you for the empowerment. We thank you for the desires you have placed in our heart. Now give us, Lord God, the determination to go after those things you have set before us. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, and we lift up, Lord God, our leaders who are not on the platform this evening where they are to continue to strengthen them, empower them, Lord God, in their, in their bodies, Lord God, covered. We plead the blood of Jesus over them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. We thank you, Lord God, that what you have called over their lives, Lord God, will manifest. And we thank you, Lord God, for our sisters, um, Elder Wanda and, and a sister Makisha, Lord God, who are on the platform tonight sharing, Lord God, the knowledge, the wisdom, Lord God, that you have given us, given them, Lord God, to empower us in our faith, to empower us to just do it anyway, even if we, if, even if we have to start at our kitchen tables. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen.